When it comes to food preferences, you've probably heard of a vegetarian, a pescatarian. How about a breatharian? What is the longest that you have gone without food? Now for me, it's about 25 hours and that was pretty tough. But what about 70 years? Impossible, right? Now as somebody that has been obsessed with breath work now for about seven years, I came across the curious case, Pralad Yanni, a breatharian monk who claimed to not have a drop of water or an ounce of food for 70 years. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at the bizarre world of breatharianism. I'm going to look at what it is, how could it even theoretically be possible, and what my thoughts are at the end based on all of this evidence that we've looked at. So please stick all the way through because we've got a corker of a video. If you're new here, hi, my name is Mike Mayer. I'm a breathwork coach. I run this YouTube channel and I also have a separate podcast called The Breathcast where I get to interview the world's top authors, experts, yogis, scientists, documentarians and everything in between about this thing that we all do breathing in and out and I get to work with people one-on-one -on -one through my elite breath coaching program but more about that a little bit later now just before we go any further um, this is a breath journalist's view into the world of breatharianism I'm not advocating this for one second I do not think you should try this and we should say before you go ahead and try any different changes to your lifestyle always consult with your healthcare practitioner now with all of that out the way let's get stuck into this fascinating world of breatharianism so first of all let's answer the question what is breatharianism have you ever heard that some people are able to eat light that they live on light alone do you believe this <laughs> Well, I didn't. But by chance, I saw sometime in the 90s this TV documentary on the patron saint of Switzerland, Nicolas of Fleur. For the last 20 years of his life, his only nourishment was allegedly divine light. Now, I came across a 2011 documentary called In the Beginning There Was Light by a wonderful Austrian director called P.A. Straubinger. And so this is what he had to say about breatharianism. It means that there are people who eat very little or nothing at all. We have to say from a scientific standpoint, we don't know to what extreme this works. Most people who say this is complete nonsense and that's, that's uh, uh, completely stupid are caught in, in this uh, classical model of uh, caloric theory. Okay, so there appears to be a breatharianism scale, so it's not just all or nothing. Let's see what Peter also has to say about this. In China, they have these three steps of bigu. There's this absolute bigu, mm -hmm. no eating at all, no drinking. The next step is just drinking, and the third step, most breathar breatharians I came across, they actually live of two, three hundred calories Today. So on one end of the spectrum, we have people here saying that they don't have a drop of water or any food and they live purely off light and air. And then we have this other end of the breath tearing spectrum where they appear to be having about 300 calories a day for a sustained period of time. And I think that's an important distinction because often when we hear that term, we think it's air and light and nothing else. And it just sounds wonderful and crazy. But actually, there is this nuance to it, which I didn't know until I went down this, this rabbit hole. So we're talking about air and light. And what we're actually talking about here is known also as prana so let's just hear peter explain what is prana modern science cannot produce one single living cell out of dead matter life energy is still one of the biggest mysteries and uh we have in 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 the eastern traditions we we have names for it like chi in india for life energy or therianism also is called living on prana you take the the life energy directly. In German, for example, it's called Lichtnahrung. It means, Protherianism is called Lichtnahrung, that means living from light 
Now we know this is a very controversial subject for sure, and it doesn't take much Googling to find controversy around breatarians getting caught snacking on fast food like McDonald's. In fact, there's one very famous case of a guy called Willie Brooks who was caught eating fast food. And so it's very easy to find the discredit around this. But actually that just compelled me to go further into it and go, okay, so there's so many people claiming this and being caught out. What about the ones that weren't caught out? And this brings me on to Pralad Yanni, the breatharian monk from India. The most fascinating case of a human being claiming not to have had food or water from the age of seven and he died at 90 in 2020 so over 70 years he claims not to have had food or water it's very easy to dismiss that was he snacking on mcdonald's in between but what was interesting here and what was also caught in the documentary was he was put under scientific scrutiny in the early 2000s they put him in a hospital they had round the clock surveillance they were changing the cameramen all the time so no one could be like sneaking in food or water they were putting him through ct scans they were looking at his um, bladder reabsorbing the urine and during that time during that time he did not wee he did not poop and he uh, did not drink and did not eat and it's a very short experiment but nonetheless fascinating here's what some of the doctors had to say about it before and after for the medical science this is uh, not possible 60 years without water or food or energy i simply don't believe it that's impossible i've gotten out of the habit of saying it's impossible Instead, I just say, I can't imagine it. In India, there's an entire tradition of the renunciation of food. I was so hopeless to begin with that I thought that it would not continue for more than 24 hours. This had to be proved only physically. You have to keep a watch on him and it could be proved. So it was constantly observation under uh, my supervision. All the security personnel were, was uh, from the hospital side and it was a camera observation. I started my mind that he is, uh, he is cheating and this is not going to continue. So from day one only, I took all possible measures to see that he is not left alone. I defy science. This is a bomb. The whole science has to be rejected. Something is there. And what is that something? We have to find out. Maybe, Maybe there is something to it. Who knows? I mean, there's a 100% truth in this. And if it is a truth, it is for the scientific world to now answer this question. Perhaps what we are witnessing here are phenomena to which the natural sciences have no obvious access. Science considers this inconceivable and impossible, but other frames of thought might allow such things. So, so how could any of this even be possible? What could even be going on here? I think to even begin to scratch the surface and try and get my head around what's going on here, I've got to get a little bit of an understanding about calorific theory. Caloric theory um, is, is like this Gaussian curve. So caloric theory fits for a lot of people more or less. The further you go out on this curve, uh, the, the higher are the deviations and the fewer individuals you found. These breatharians, they have a very high amount of this unmeasured energy. You, you cannot account for calorically. We only have stories about these people. And uh, as I said, the longest study is 410 days. And yeah. here Ratan Manek lost 19 kilos. So, so that only shows that he, he lived on very, very little. Now, the other area we haven't really gone into yet is sun gazing the art of looking at the sun and bringing energy into your body a bit like a plant which again all sounds like crazy rubbish right now here's what peter had to say about a study about humans and photosynthesis sun gazing is is also a lot about it's it's an open eye meditation so you use the the sun as yeah. as a meditation object as as your focus yes of of course the direct sun lies probably also uh, will have an, an effect. I think in 2014, there was published a study that showed that light uh, can directly used by mitochondria, so by our cell, that was denied 
for for centuries because they always said you know there is no human photosynthesis mm. and actually it, it seems that there is something like uh, human photosynthesis hi guys just really quick just before we crack on with this breathtarianism i just wanted to let you know that i do offer one-to-one -one coaching for a very very small amount of people each month so if you're somebody that's extremely busy you're feeling stressed maybe you've got some anxiety and you've been interested in thinking about working with a breath coach you are very welcome to apply to work with me the link is down below i do ask that anybody that's thinking about working with me must commit to a minimum of 22 minutes of my breathwork practices a day we can have a call to see if this feels right for you so the link is down below and i look forward to seeing some of you on my elite one-to-one -one breath coaching program okay let's get back on with the breatharianism cheers okay let's bring this breatharian puppy home now i've been in the breath work world for about seven years and i've seen some crazy shizzle i've huffed and puffed with wim hof in poland and cried my heart out i've done hot water rebirthing in glastonbury and i've done all sorts of crazy things in between where the breath is invoked some pretty bizarre states and yet i'm still very very skeptical about this idea that we don't need food and water it still just makes me think hmm there's something going on here but peter who spent 10 years researching this let's see what his final thoughts are on whether or not breatharianism could be possible peter take it away we are all breatharians we are all living to a certain extent there's not just black and white in the, in the whole breatharian discussion it, it mostly happens between black and white you know eating three meals a day and and uh, eating after caloric theory and eating nothing there is so many much in between it's a possibility but i, yeah. I don't know yeah. I don't know. I only would know it if I would do it myself. I can tell you I, I eat, I, I do intermittent fasting. Even after after a week of, of, of fasting, I had a lot of energy. But uh, there is our, our psyche is a lot involved. Is breatharianism real? Yes, it's real in the way that we are all living to a certain extent on light on on this light of life okay so please put your comments down below let me know what you thought about this video is it possible what do you think if you've not subscribed to this channel please hit the subscribe button because as we grow we get more guests we can explore more areas of breath and human potential so please click that subscribe button and if you think there's somebody out there that you'd like to share this video with please go ahead and do that now to finish off what are you can do next well you can watch the entire unedited version of me and Peter talk about this uh, very thing, breatharianism, here. Or you might fancy trying a lovely, relaxing, slow, coherent breathing technique here. I'll see you on one of these videos next. Thank you so much for watching. Take a deep breath. Have a great day. Cheers. Mm -hmm.